All right, next section, we are talking about the derivatives of natural logarithmic functions. So let's look at a couple of theorems first. And by the way, these theorems are going to sound somewhat familiar, especially if you looked at the natural logarithmic function with the base of e. All right, so the first theorem, theorem 6, for any positive number x, if I'm taking the derivative of a natural log function of x, the derivative is 1 over x. You're like, how is that? There's a whole theorem behind that and stuff, taking the limit of the difference quotient, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to go through all that, but that's what this turns out to be, okay? The next theorem is very similar to the first one. Just like on the natural exponential functions, the second theorem was very similar to the first one. It just built upon itself. This one built upon this theorem 6. So the derivative of a natural logarithmic function is the derivative of the function divided by the derivative of the function itself. So for instance, if I'm taking the derivative of the natural log of f of x, well based on theorem 6 that would be 1 over f of x. But then I also need to take the derivative of that function which is where we get this division problem. The derivative of the function divided by the function itself. That's what this was telling you. That's what this simplifies to, okay? So hang in there. Let me get some examples on the board for us and we'll work ourselves through it. I'll be right back. All right, so the directions say to differentiate. Let's look at the first one. So we have y equals negative 9 times the natural log of x. Agreed? If we remember that when we have this multiplication problem with the constant, the constant just kind of hangs out front, doesn't it? So to find this derivative, we're basically doing negative 9 and multiplying it by the derivative of the natural log of x. Right? Okay. Which means we get y prime equals negative 9 times so what's the derivative of the natural log of x? Sure, that theorem 6 said 1 over x. Therefore, the derivative is equal to negative 9 over x. Good? Like, is that simple? It's that simple. Don't read too much into it. Problem 2. Okay, so to take this derivative, right, the theorem says 1 over x, right? Well, because this was x. But in this case, I'm not taking the natural log of x. I'm taking the natural log of 6x. So in this case, it's not 1 over x. It's 1 over, good, 6x. Now, that's not just an x. That's a 6x, right? which means we still need to find the derivative of 6x. You're like, wait, what? Up here, the first thing we had to find was the derivative of the natural log of x. Well, that's 1 over x. That was theorem 6. But here's the thing. Technically, we should have then found the derivative with respect to x of just x. That's a 1 only. The challenge is that when you're looking at the parent graph, when they start messing with it, it starts adding on another derivative we have to take. Just like when we looked at the exponential functions and we were given uh, a function was y equals e to the 3x, right? Well, the derivative of e was just itself, but then we had to take the derivative of the 3x. Same thing here. I have to take the derivative of natural log of x, which is this, but then I have to multiply it by the derivative of that variable itself. So down here, the natural log of 6x, its derivative is 1 over 6x. But then, just like we did here, we've got to take the derivative of the 6x. Just like here, I have to take the derivative of the 3x. With me? Okay, 
So in this case then, our derivative is going to be 1 over 6x multiplied by, what's the derivative of 6x? Yeah, just 6. You're like, hey, wait, I know what's going to happen right there. Those 6s cancel, don't they? Which means in this case, I just get 1 over x, right? Okay. So, just like when we dealt with the uh, exponential with a base e, and the derivative of this is itself, but we had to take the derivative of its power with a natural log function, it's 1 over this thing, but we got to take the derivative of that thing itself. Cool? Okay, so if you caught that, let me get rid of this just so I have a little bit more board space and it doesn't look as messy. Number three, they want me to take the derivative of that. Tell me what I'm going to write. Good, I heard one over. One over what? Yeah, one over that polynomial. Is that it? You're right, it's not. Good, then you have to multiply it by the derivative of the polynomial. Okay, so what's the derivative of the polynomial? Wait, let me write this guy down. Yeah, the derivative of the polynomial is 14x plus 5, right? Which is why the second one, the second theorem that we had a few minutes ago said it's the derivative of the function which was 14x plus 5, divided by the original function. This one really shows it. This one does also, but then the 6 is cancel and you're left with 1 over x. Are you with me? Okay. How about number 4 then? You're like, okay, wait, there's a power. So, how do you take the derivative of a function with the power? Good. Bring the power down front and then reduce by 1. Excellent. Is that it? Oh no, that, that extended power rule thingy. What does it say then? If you're saying that extent, yeah. You have to multiply by the derivative of the base. Good job. Which means the derivative of g of x is 4 times the natural log of x to the power of 3 times, that's right, this is 1 over x. Which means this thing is going to look like 4 times the natural log of x to the power of 3, the whole thing divided by x. Cool? Okay, if you need to rewind this part just to like look at it again, that would be a good idea, and I'm going to go find us some more problems. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's look at example number 5. Hmm, looks like I have a product. Looks like I have to remember how to take the derivative of a product, right? Okay, so here we go. To find the derivative of this product, tell me what do I do first? Good, you take the derivative of the first one. Don't do anything to the second one. Add it to, good, the first one. By the way, it looks like I'm going to move problem 6 down here for a moment. So I've got a little bit more room to write across. Because that will make it better for us. Okay. So again, take the derivative of the first one. Don't do anything to the second one. Then what? Yeah. Add it to the first one multiplied by 
the derivative of the second one. Okay, understood. So, what is the derivative of e to the x? Yeah, itself, e to the x. But then remember, you have to multiply by the derivative of the power. Well, that's just a 1, isn't it? So I don't have to worry about that. And then I'm going to multiply this by the natural log of x squared. Add to it e to the x. And then I'm going to take the derivative of the natural log of x squared, don't I? Well, what's that going to be? Good. 1 over x squared, right? Ah, but then you have to multiply it by the derivative of x squared, don't you? Okay. By the way, you could write that up here too. You could write both derivatives that you need to do up here as well, or you could do it like I did it on this second line. That choice is yours, whichever is going to be easier for you, but know that you have to do that. Okay, so the derivative of this function is e to the x times the natural log of x squared plus e to the x times 1 over x squared times 2x, right? Okay, so let's see what this thing's looking like. The derivative of this thing equals, you know, that eh, we'll leave it alone, e to the x times the natural log of x squared plus, so it looks like 2x e to the x over x squared, right? When you multiply this second part together. Well, gee, what's going to happen? Yeah, over there on that second half, the part following the plus sign, and x cancels from the top and the bottom, doesn't it? So that looks like 2 e to the x over x, doesn't it? All right. Now, there is a property with respect to log functions. Do you remember what happens to the power when you have a log function? Do you remember what happens to this power? Does it have to stay here? No, there's a property that says that 2 can come down in front. So I've got this 2 coming down in, in front. So we have 2 times e to the x times the natural log of x plus 2 times e to the x over x. Here is your derivative. It's a funky looking derivative, but that's the derivative. Are you with me? And how you get there is taking it one step at a time. The only thing that's kind of oddball-y, that you're like, wait, how am I supposed to, it's called practice. You have to remember that this power on the x actually can come down in front and not stay there. And I can bring it down in front of the whole thing because the whole thing is a multiplication problem. Good? Okay. Let's look at number six. Number six, we're taking the derivative still. Okay, another product. Lovely. Okay, so look at the product. First things first, take the derivative of the natural log of 5x, right? Multiply it by the natural log of 3x. Add it to what? Good. The natural log of 5x times the derivative of the natural log of 3x. All right, so here we go. What's the natural log of 5x? Good, 1 over 5x. But then it gets multiplied by, yeah, the derivative of 5x, right? All right. Multiply by 
the natural log of 3x. And now we're adding the natural log of 5x and multiplying by the derivative of the natural log of 3x. So what's the derivative of the natural log of 3x? Good, 1 over 3x. But, yep, times the derivative of that 3x. Oof, lots of derivatives happening in here, right? That's okay, you can handle it. All right, so let's keep going with this derivative. So this is 1 over 5x, yep, times 5, times the natural log of 3x, plus, good, natural log of 5x, times 1 over 3x, times 3. Okay, I see stuff that's going to cancel. Do you? Yep, those 5s drop, and those 3s drop, don't they? So, my derivative looks like 1 over x times the natural log of 3x plus, yeah, 1 over x times the natural log of 5x. And I don't see anything I can add together, so what do you think? Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay, again, if you need to, Rewind this segment so you can go over problems 5 and 6 again. The product rule is not bad, but there's a lot going on with it, so you just have to take it slow and piece by piece to make certain you catch everything, especially now that you're dealing with the natural logs. Not only is it 1 over this, but now you've got to take the derivative of that after you do the 1 over, right? Okay, so stay tuned. Got another one for us. Okay, so let's look at this next problem. So they're asking me to take the derivative of this natural log that contains a fraction. And the fraction is a polynomial over a polynomial. And now you're like, okay, so that means 1 over that thing times the derivative of a quotient. So not that that's not bad, but there's actually two ways of working this problem out. Because if you remember from a previous lecture on natural logs, or just log functions, it didn't even have to be just natural log functions, it could have been just log functions, there's a property that actually lets me take this division problem and reduce it down to a subtraction problem. So if I remember that property, then it's going to make this problem a little bit easier to work with. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so the property states that I can take this, I'm not ready to take the derivative yet. I can take this function and I can rewrite it based upon the logs or the property of logs. I can say the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. That's a property of logs and lets me actually take a division problem and rewrite it to a subtraction problem. So if you had forgotten that property, go back and look at those videos on properties of log functions. Cool? Okay, well now that I have a subtraction problem, to take the derivative of a subtraction problem is actually quite easy, isn't it? I am going to Take the derivative of the first one, which since it's a natural log, this would be 1 over x squared plus 5, right? Ah, uh, yes, but times the derivative of x squared plus 5 minus the derivative of ln of x, which is, ah, uh, yes, 1 over x. And if I'm consistent, it's times the derivative of x which is just one, which is why they never write it, and that's why they end up with two theorems. Okay, next line. The derivative is 1 over x squared plus 5 times, what's this derivative? Good, 2x minus just 1 over x, right? Okay, so so far, this looks like 2x over 
x squared plus 5 minus 1 over x. Do you agree? Yeah, so do I. And you're like, are we done? Almost. But I took the derivative, I know. But it's not simplified. And you're like, why not? Because it's two separate fractions. And to simplify it, it needs to be one fraction. Which means in order to subtract those, you need to have a common denominator, which is right x times the quantity x squared plus 5. So we have an LCD of x times the quantity of x squared plus 5, which means that first fraction, top and bottom, is going to get multiplied by x. The second fraction, top and bottom, is going to get multiplied by x squared plus 5. With me? This part, this simplifying part, common denominator, subtracting these fractions, this is all algebra stuff you learned in whatever math class you learned that in. So this part's nothing new. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot how to do this. Well, here's your refresher. So pay attention, watch it through once, and then rewind it so you can take notes. All right? Okay, so the first fraction, top and bottom, is going to get multiplied by x. So this derivative is going to look like the top gets multiplied by x, the bottom gets multiplied by x, and I'm just going to write the denominator like this. I don't really want to distribute right now. Minus. Now the numerator, top and bottom, get multiplied by x squared plus 5. So I have x squared plus 5 on the top and x times x squared plus 5 on the bottom, right? Okay. Now, since they both have the same denominator, I can go ahead and subtract those numerators, can't I? So, let's be careful now. I can write this as one fraction because the denominators are the same. And if I'm paying very close attention, I'm taking 2x squared and minusing x squared plus 5, right? But here's the deal. You're minusing not just one term. You're minusing both of them. Me, I put parentheses or brackets there to remind myself that that minus sign not only goes with the x squared, but it also goes with the 5. So I would have two x squared minus x squared minus five in the numerator, which when I do that subtraction, and yes, it's all over that denominator. And when I do that subtraction, I would get x squared minus five in the numerator and the denominator I can just leave like this. I don't have to distribute it. Here is my derivative. Cool? With me? Okay. Again, the key on this one to make it a little bit simpler to actually find its derivative was to remember the property of logs, which lets me change a, sub a division problem into a subtraction problem. And then to take the derivative of a subtraction problem is easy. It's only two parts. And then to simplify, I actually had to subtract the two fractions. That was the simplifying process. So I have one single fraction as my answer. Cool? Okay. We're going to find a tangent line. Yay! Be right. Okay, this problem is back. Find an equation of a tangent line to the graph of y equals that at x equals 2. <laughs> so we did this in a few previous lectures, finding the equation of a tangent line. Well, let's just stop for a second. Let's remind ourselves, how do you find the equation of a line? Good, you need a slope and you need a point. So you need an m and you need a point comprised of an x and a y. Agreed? Okay. So there's a couple of different ways we can start. But since you know you need a point, which is made up of an x and a y, I only see the x. So we need to find the y. 
So let's see. First, find a point. Since x equals 2, find y. <coughs> How are you going to find y? Plug, you're right, plug it in. I'm going to plug it into this function here. So to find y, I'm going to say y equals, in parentheses, 2 squared minus 2 times the natural log of 6 times 2, which means y equals, what's 2 squared minus 2? Yeah, just 2, times the natural log of 12. And you get your calculators. I already got my calculator. And I ended up with approximately 4.9698. Hopefully we agree. So, our point is 2 comma 4.9698. Hooray! Got the point. But now you also need the slope. Okay. Now, they were very specific. They didn't just say find the equation of a line. They said find the equation of a tangent line. Which means to find the slope of a tangent line, you're going to have to do what? You're going to have to take the derivative of that thing. Got it? You're going to have to take the derivative of this thing in order to find the generic slope equation. And by, so uh, find slope, but in this case you're finding the generic slope equation. We'll find the specific in a minute, but you're finding the generic for right now. So, and how do we do it? We said we find the derivative. So y prime. Okay, this is a product. We've been working with how to find the derivative of products for quite a, quite a few problems in this particular lecture, let alone a few others. So let's see what you, uh, let's see what you remember as I move along here. So I'm going to take the derivative of the first part of the function multiplied by the second, add to it the first part of the function, multiplied by the derivative of the second. Okay, so the derivative of this first part is what? Good, 2x minus 1 times the natural log of 6x, add to it the first one, and now the derivative of the natural log of 6x. Well, that's going to be 1 over 6x times 6. If you're like, where'd you get the 6? Remember, it's not just 1 over 6x, it's times the derivative of 6x as well. Okay, so I have 2x minus 1 times the natural log of 6x plus x squared minus x. These sixes will cancel, won't they? Good, so that's just over x. Are you okay if I write it that way? Okay. Let me carry this up over here because I've got a little bit more room. So this derivative is going to be 2x minus 1 times the natural log of 6x Plus, so what happens with these x's right here? Yeah, they're going to cancel, aren't they? <clears throat> Excuse me, which gives you x minus 1. Cool? Okay. Now, that's the generic slope equation. And that's fine. But I need the specific slope. It 
since the generic slope equation has x's in it, how do you think you're going to find the specific? Good. Plug in 2, because x is 2. Let's see. y prime equals 2 times 2 minus 1 times a natural log of 6 times 2 plus, yeah, 2 minus 1, right? Okay, so it equals 3 times a natural log of 12 plus 1. Do you agree? Okay, you get your calculator. I already got my calculator out, and so I got... 8.455 approximately, which means my slope is 8.455. Good? Okay. So I have two important pieces of information. I have my point. I have my slope. And now I'm ready to write the equation of a line, which means I need to board some more board space. So hang in there while I clear some space off and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got some more board space. Here's our point. Here's our slope. Now we have all the pieces of the puzzle to find an equation of a line. In this case, a tangent line. And I know it's a tangent line based upon how I found the slope. Okay? But regardless of what kind of line it is, there is a formula that we use to help us find it, and it's called the point-slope formula. And so the point-slope formula looks like y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Yeah, that's a throwback from whatever math class you learned this in. Okay, so y minus 4.9 six nine eight equals the slope times the parentheses x minus two cool okay and now we just keep working this out and we end up getting y by itself to have the point slope format okay do you agree with that and now move that 4.9698 over. This is what I have is the equation of the tangent line to the graph of that y equals equation from the previous uh, portion of this lecture. Good? Okay. Not bad. The only thing that could really kind of mess you up is finding that derivative. So take that one slow. And uh, if you need to rewind it, as always, go back, listen to it again, look at it again. And stay tuned because I have a couple of stories for us.